Hello, my name is Nick Ryan. I'm a product manager in the Data Foundations Business Unit at ServiceNow. And this is going to be the first in a multi-part series of short videos on how to build a CMDB integration. And this process is going to be very similar to how ServiceNow goes about building service graph connectors. So if you've ever been curious uh, about how to build a service graph connector, hopefully this series will also help you on your journey to building out those integrations as well. In this uh, series, we're actually going to take an example of building an integration into Kong's API gateway. And so we're going to use that as our example as we walk through. So let's get to it. So what are we going to do in this uh, five-part series that we're about to embark on? Well, very simply, we're going to build a CMDB integration. But how are we going to do that? So these five high-level areas are what we will cover. There will be a short video on each one, and we will walk through the details uh, that are behind each one of these. So let's get to it. Part one, we're going to do the source analysis process. So what is the source analysis? Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, hopefully, in that we're going to analyze the source technology that we are going to build the integration with. Um, these few bullet points here about understanding protocols, authentication, and payloads um, are really the output uh, of that process. As we go through it, though, really what we're doing is becoming familiar with that technology. Maybe you're a subject matter expert in that technology, or maybe your company has a subject matter in that technology. But if they don't, and you're still tasked with building this integration, what are the things that you need to know? So first around the protocols, it's gonna be important to know what we're dealing with from a communication perspective. So um, do I just have a file, like an Excel spreadsheet that I need to load in? or is there a source that I can repeatedly query and get updated information? So uh, it's important that you understand all the possibilities in terms of how to communicate with that source system. Second, once you know what uh, type of protocol that system speaks, then you need to also understand, all right, how do I authenticate into that environment? Maybe I just need a username and password. Maybe I have to set up certificates. Obviously, there's a lot of options when it comes to authentication. So it's important to understand how your company has implemented the authentication requirements for that particular technology. And third, it's important to understand the output uh, of the various data sets that you need to get back from that source technology. And this is important for what will be in part two when we get to analyzing the mapping and how to uh, map this data into the CMDB. So whether you're, you've got a Postman environment or just doing some command line JDBC queries, however you can go about um, understanding that response data, it will help us as we move into the second step of this process. So let's take the example that we're going to use throughout in uh, the Kong API gateway. So here, if I navigate to the Kong documentation site, they have a multiple products, but we're going to focus on Kong gateway uh, for now. And so I go to the overview page and start to explore. And I can quickly see, all right, well, I can understand how Kong works, what are the key concepts, one of the, probably the most important pieces of information that I'll be using is the API reference. So right away, um, I can start to go through, understand a bit about Kong, but one of the most important things is you would read down through all of this documentation um, as we get to it, is here with the Kong API gateway, or Kong admin API, sorry. This Kong admin API is going to be our mechanism for the um, integration.
migration point. So this is what we're going to use to get the data out of Kong Gateway and into ServiceNow. And so um, I can go to that directly now. It opens up a long list of all the endpoints that I can use. But one, one of the um, important pieces of information, if we remember the protocol, so this is obviously going to be a REST uh, API integration. But here you can start to see our default ports for the API is 8001. But if you want to secure it with HTTPS, then it will be using 8444. And beyond that, we can also see how you, your company may have secured uh, the admin API because it's a very powerful API and, and not wide open access is desirable. So uh, your organization would probably have it locked down in different ways. And so you can see this extra link here, which I already have open. So it talks about how, what are some of the options for securing this? So it helps you get familiar with possible implementations that you may be working with to know what that authentication requirement is um, for getting into it. So we've got the protocol, we've got the authentication mechanism, and now we need to just really understand what the APIs are about. Uh, before we do that, though, the key concepts are going to be important uh, as we get into this because what we're really after with this integration is we want to populate the APIs that this gateway serves, and we want to populate those in service now. Uh, Pick your favorite workflow that may use this type of data, but it might be anything from understanding vulnerabilities on APIs to um, being able to perform change management on APIs. So whatever it might be, the point is we're trying to get the APIs into ServiceNow. So in, out of these key concepts, let's just click on the first one of services. So services, um, are going to represent a couple of things in terms of our data mapping, but these are the primary um, way that APIs are represented in Calm Gateway. So you can read through the documentation, see that that's the case, but this is obviously going to be our key area that we focus on in terms of saying, all right, what are my APIs and then how do I map them? So you can see there's related links on how to request um, data about it from the admin API. But before we do that, I'm going to keep going through the key concepts. So there's so this, our services. Next will be our routes. Let's see what routes are all about. So routes, uh, if you read through this, they appear to be really the front end parts that clients interact with that then um, talks to the service that's the backend API part of the, the data flow. So routes are really kind of a front end client facing URL. The services are the back end fulfilling uh, aspect of the API. And so then there's these other concepts of upstreams. So let's see what that is real quick. Upstreams um, really are a load balancer at the end of the day. So under the hood, um, Palm Gateway uses an Nginx uh, load balancer. And so you can see here that the upstream is used for load balancing incoming requests. And we'll dive into that more as we start to build this out. And the last one and the key concepts are plugins. So plugins uh, in different gateway technologies may be different things, in, but most commonly they're enforcing a policy of some sort on a particular part of the gateway, whether it's on the API itself, maybe it's across everything in the gateway, but it may be uh, authentication requirements, like a certain API can use basic auth, whereas a different API may require OAuth. Um, there might be rate limiting that you want to implement on APIs and so on, but that's really what the plugins are. It might be called a policy or something different in, in other systems. So now we've got a general understanding that the services are really our backend 
API, the routes are the client facing front ends. We've got a load balancer option and we've got different plugins and policies that we can implement. So I'm gonna go down and just jump into the admin API itself. So here it takes us back to this um, overview. I'm gonna to go to the first one, information route. So it'll start to let us understand what the endpoint is that we're gonna use. And then to that part about understanding the output, here we start to get some sample payloads. Um, so without even having to go and set up a whole environment, we can already begin to understand some of the output here um, and, and get some, some of that initial insights about it. And so we can see there's other options for understanding what uh, the Kong gateway has in terms of data we can query, but I'm gonna skip past that and let's go to what we saw in the key concepts around services. So um, we can again, start to see what we, what we can query here and start to get an idea of some of the data. So we can get the, the name of the API, we can get the protocols that it speaks, maybe some hosts that it's on, ports, the path names, and so on. So important information there. And really for the purposes of our integration, we're just worried about getting data. So doing things like adding services and, and other, we don't need to worry about because uh, we're not aiming to manage this gateway. We just want to get data from it to use within ServiceNow. Likewise, I can um, look at the route, uh, the route data and again, see that it's really getting data from the slash routes path. And so here I can again see some of the initial data points that we'll use in our mapping. So keep exploring. Uh, hopefully your technology you're integrating with has uh, similar useful documentation for understanding it. Again, if you're not a subject matter expert on the technology, Look for you know some of the free learning options. Like in the case of Kong, they have a, a an academy that has some really great classes that uh, are you know they're just self-paced, but have labs that walk you through the technology to get familiar with. So again, look for opportunities to learn about the technology that you're interacting with, and hopefully it gives you a better feel for what your integration is going to look like. And so with that, that concludes the first part of doing the source analysis. Um, take some time, get familiar with what you might be looking to integrate with, collect some of these data points, and then you'll be ready to jump in for part two of this series on uh, doing the mapping and the data modeling. Thank you.